Welcome everybody to Eye of the Serpent Tarot for another pick a card. So today's pick a card, we're asking what hidden fortune uh, is going to be revealed to you. And it's inspired by me just receiving via backing a Kickstarter campaign, a beautiful, huge, incredibly detailed and deep deck called The Shadows of the Middle Ages. It's an interesting deck because I think the, the creator started off with doing her version of the Normand and then she can she combined in astrology and all sorts of other things and it became, became a kind of magnum opus really. It's Brilliant, beautiful piece of work. So it's actually quite a monster deck. I just, I'll just show you. I mean, already under there, just imagine there's nine cards under each of those on top of that already. And an enormous, you know, like a small number of cards. This is the number of cards in this deck. So for anybody who is into reading, you may very well want to check out the, the link in the description box below uh, because she has it now on Etsy. So you may want to check that out if you want because the Kickstarter obviously is closed since since. I've received my deck and others are receiving their decks. So it is, Lenormand to me is, is a quintessential fortune deck. I use it often as a fortune energy in readings. What I wanted to do here is I wanted to make this a real showcase for this particular reading. So it will have just as much as it as you will have of tarot or anything else. So when I first learned Lenormand, which was many years ago, I used to use a nine card spread that had three cards for the past, three cards for the present and three cards for the future. So that's what I'm going to use here, even though it's going to be a little bit crowded on the table, we'll, we'll be able to do it. And what I'm asking Spirit here is for some hidden fortune that is meant to come up for you to be aware of now. And the seeds of it will be in the past, so we'll look at the energy of the past. There'll be signs about it in the present which will help you connect to it. And then it shows kind of what that's supposed to bring about in the future, anything you need to be aware of to, to manage or leverage or whatever it might be. So, and when I've done that, we'll have a look at tarot for each of the past, present and future focuses. And then a couple of other things before closing out with a blessing. So the main thing is going to be this first nine card spread, which will be also having this as an additional card. So this, what I asked here for spirit is for a central theme energy to help you choose the pile but when I do a astrology chart based reading as a private reading for instance I often say the middle card it's it's the one card that's not one of the houses uh, but it's an energy that permeates the whole reading this is this is how to think about this there's something about these energies that will permeate the whole reading so for pile number one we have card number 18 if that calls to you as a number Dog. Now, in Lenormand, dog is all about loyalty, friendship. It would suggest this has something to do with a new friend coming in, um, a, a loyalty, a test of loyalty, your loyalty, somebody else's loyalty. There's some issue around that. Friendship, companionship, those sort of issues. For pile number two, we have card 92. We have Libra, so one of the astrology sign cards. This could be about something that's meant to come up in Libra season. So at the point that I'm filming this, we're just moving out of that. So it could be sort of something that is, is going to form over the next year or so, depending on when you see this reading. But it probably won't be that long after I've, I've filmed it because I want to sort of show off the deck to people if they want to see it. Um, but it could also be, and it's probably more likely to be what Libra represents. So it represents air signs. If you are a Libra or you have Libra strongly, it might call to you. Otherwise, it's things like fairness, equity, balance, socially acceptable or socially thoughtful sorts of situations and so forth as well. And then for pile three, we have 77 and we have the pyramids. So if you're drawn to the mysteries of Egypt, if you're drawn to that kind of esoteric knowledge, the, the mystery schools, all of that kind of thing, something here about a mystery or an issue that stands the test of time and, and is a cause for wonder later on. So if that calls to you on some level, that might be your pile. But feel free to go to more than one if you want as well too. There could easily be a couple of sort of storylines around around a hidden fortune for you so you do you when you know what reading or readings you want to go to i've got the timestamps in the description box below and i'll see you there welcome pile one to your reading so you came to the reading with dog which we've got over here and as i say dog represents loyalty friendship all of those sort of things so as i say as a theme this could either be talking about someone that you can very much trust it could be talking about your own trustworthiness or it could be talking about being wary of someone you trust and i have to say that that the latter may be what's going on here now it doesn't mean bad things and i also think that there is someone to trust interestingly 
It could be, there could be two people that are being talked about here, or we could be talking about a spirit guide or even a past one in spirit who is, who is protecting you. And there's reasons I'm going to say that. Uh, but there's something new. It could be a new child with the stalk coming up and with Ostara. This is springtime. Or it could be a new project you have. There's a lot here potentially about family because this is also a house as well. For some of you, this is about some sort of change movement or new opportunity, new child, new addition or whatever to the family. There could be that. That, that, that is definitely there. If any of you are looking for that, that's likely to come. Uh, but if it's not that, it's something new that you are wanting to expand or give birth to and you want to protect. And the interesting thing is that on one hand, the, the, the future here is suggesting that there is stability and there is the capacity to let this thing be born, but you have to take care. It's saying it at every point. So taking into account the dog here, when we look at the past, we have compass. There is some sort of point about navigation or choice. There is a choice that you've made, probably in the recent past, will have ramifications that you don't see yet. And this is partly to let you know that that is going to be the case. So there's almost a kind of a reflection back. And it's almost a reflection back on who have you trusted in the past. And where has your, where has your navigation about that been right and where hasn't it been right? You have a tendency, and you've always done this, to care about, to look after and protect those closest to you. For some of you, there is a woman, this is very specifically an adult woman, who has either been an incredibly nurturing, caring person who's helped you navigate that and find the right people to do, you know, to, to connect with, or has been the opposite. Uh, so it's going to depend on who's coming to this reading. But in the past, there is something about trust that you either put in someone that was the right trust to do or trust that you put in someone that wasn't. But it's you may already have started to sense or see some of that because in the present we have the cat. Now we've got the dog and the cat and they're both card number 18 because they're both kind of almost familiar energies. But the dog is loyal. The cat is very independent. Now cats are wonderful and anybody who's a cat person out there, I'm not mean, I'm, I'm more a dog person, but like you can be a cat person. Cats are lovely. But they are very independent, and sometimes with the energy of this card, it can be someone who's a little bit sort of like secretive, mysterious, maybe not even incredibly trustworthy. <laughs> so there is something saying here that that is an issue. Like what is your compass, you know, particularly as it's connected to the compass, well, the decisions that you've made about who to trust, you have to be careful and be more discerning because into the future we have Trojan horse. Now, a Trojan horse is, of course, the story of something that appeared to be a gift, appeared to be something wonderful, but what was within it when, it, when, when Troy sent this in to, to deal with their war, they had all their, their army in there, and that actually gave the advantage in a battle. So there is someone around you, I would say, Pa One, who's very, very strategic, may not be always trustworthy. Now, it doesn't always mean that they're going to do wrong by you, but there is a warning here to be aware of it. And if we look at over here, as I say, with cancer, we have the, the sort of sense of protection. We have stalk, which is often, as I say, a new child, a new addition. But if not, it's movement, change, things that are coming in that are good. Wanting to connect to Astara, spring, all that is new and beautiful and so forth. So there is, on one level, you have, you have set in play something, either around family, home, or or just something that really matters to you creatively, and you do want to protect it, you've set that in play already, you'll know what this is, I think. It's something, a decision, and there is a woman involved in it in some way. But it's possible, when we look at Samhain being here, so that's effectively All Hallows' Eve, Halloween, it is possible that this may be a protective influence. So this is the thing to ask yourself, and we'll have a look with Tarot to see if we can get any idea of this, but... But it may be that it's actually a loved one watching over you. I feel, feel for some of you that's the case. Someone who was your guide, your compass, your navigation before, or who has always been with you as a spirit guide and helps you navigate this because there is something very precious coming into being, something new coming into being, and it'll happen quite quickly and movement will be quite fast. You'll need that guidance because someone else is not necessarily to be trusted around this. And this, this guidance would be important. If 
if you feel it is this woman who's a problem, if you have a female friend or a female relative or something like that, that you feel is a little bit sneaky and would maybe want to, to take away or, or diminish something that you hold precious, then I think this is an indication to call out to your ancestors and your past loved ones because you're probably a medium, you probably have that connection and you can get that, you can get the intel in a way to know how to protect that there and to not fall for the Trojan horse. Because right now, if you don't do that, if you don't think very carefully about who is worth trusting, you may trust the wrong person. And that could that could be a threat to the house, to the stability, the home, the, the, the sense of security into the future of this thing, whatever it is that you want to do. So for some of you, as I say, it could be around a child, and this could be around you know, is there sort of someone in the family or friends or whatever who would be a bad influence on that or who would who would potentially make it difficult for you to, to you know, have the lifestyle that you needed to get pregnant if you're wanting to get pregnant or whatever it is. It could be something like that or someone who'd compete with you around that or get in your mind about whether this is something you want. But it doesn't have to be around that. It doesn't literally have to be about that. There is some indication here that family is important to this, but it doesn't have to be that. But it could be a creative project. It could be someone who's a competitor and they appear to be a friend, but they're not. Um, and, and what they say is friendship. Like So to give you an example of a creative project, when people write novels, they often have what they call beta readers, which is sort of other writers who read and give feedback. And most of the time, this is wonderful. Most of the time, it's an incredibly supportive community. But it would be like really try and use your instincts well and be really careful because there could be sort of someone you did that with who then steals the idea or something like that. They appear to be helping you, but there's another thing going on. And what this is saying is that the seeds of this have already been put in place. So this is somebody you already know, and you've already got enough information, this is saying, to get it, to see it, to be able to uncover it. If you think back about the behaviours, you'll know. So you'll either know there's someone you can really trust to help you work out who this is, or you already know you can't trust this person. But this is very much about protecting something that's precious that you want to bring in. And you can do it. And as I say, you've got very strong spiritual support from, I think this is ancestors and your family on that level. Um, so it's not just you know family that you can trust around you at the moment. It's also that you have that support. And it may be, for some of you, a very distinct uh, past loved one who is who is like pay attention to dreams and messages and so forth because they're trying to protect you there's just someone around that you can't trust so and they may appear very very lovely in many ways and it may appear that they're bringing you a gift of some sort but it's not this is the thing to be aware of this is this is why you were meant to come to this reading because it's something hidden it's very hidden this person could appear to be your best friend but you'll know if you think back about it there will have been a pattern of something a pattern of putting you down, a pattern of competition, a pattern of not following through if it's someone sort of close to you. So let's use tarot and see what else we can get. So I wanted to use a tarot deck. I'm using the, the Weird World Tarot because it has a similar sort of artwork to this, so I think it's complementary. So we're just going to get three more cards around the past, and this might help us work out whether or not that woman there is a help to you and a guide, you know, whether in spirit or in reality, or whether it's the cat. So let's just see what we get. So a card to clarify compass, ace of swords, a card to clarify the woman, six of cups reversed. I, I think this is a family member who's passed on. I do, for many of you anyway. A card to clarify cancer, the star reversed. Okay, it's going to depend on who's come to this reading, but there, both those things could apply. The compass is the thing that's supposed to navigate you to something new that you're bringing in. And you've already got that idea, so you'll know what it is, whether it's a new child, a new creative idea, a new career, a new philosophy, a new idea, whatever it might be. And there's a clarity to it. It is saying you have a clarity. You have actually a great clarity of mind with the Ace of Swords upright. There is a, it is a blessing. You actually have a very good internal navigation system, and you know this. You can trust it. You can trust that actually better than trusting anybody else because you don't, you don't get this wrong. In fact, you'd be one of the sort of people probably, because if you have this dog energy, you're probably very kind. You probably would, if you had an instinct that somebody wasn't 
really sort of on the up and up, you'd probably kind of not try and look at that and try and look for the best and then originally, eventually go, oh, I was right, because you, you, your first impressions are very, very good, so pay attention to that. Six of Cups reversed with this woman. There does seem to be either a childhood or a family-type connection. With it reversed, it could be for some of you, I think it is, that there is a a past loved one, literally, watching over you, bringing you messages. So that's good. I think they're, they're helping you not fall for whatever the cat energy is. But for others, if you had a rivalry in your childhood, uh, a rivalry you know, with a sibling, a rivalry with some other sort of person in your family, a rivalry with somebody at school that you're still in contact with, this is the person. So it's just, it's just to let you know it's one or other, depending upon which applies to you. And the cancer energy here with the star reversed is that, that you're protecting something that you've wanted to do for a very long time and it is actually really important for your, your kind of life purpose. This is why it's precious. This is why you're meant to bring it in. You haven't brought it in yet. And it's possible for those where the cat is this woman that somebody's already been kind of undermining you and stopping you feeling confident. So if that's the case, if someone's playing on your confidence, just don't listen to them anymore. But otherwise, it may be that it's just precious and you're not yet ready to bring it out, but that you're going to get the guidance that you need. Okay, so then let's have a look at the present. So this cat, this person's around you in one form or another. So let's see what we can get to clarify the cat. Five of Wands reversed, okay. Then Sam Hayne, what, what do we get there? This sort of sense of the, the veil and, and the afterlife and mediumship and everything. What clarifies that? The hanged man, okay. And then the stalk, the new thing, the change, the new addition, the new energy, the, the movement, the travel, whatever the stalk is bringing to you. The lovers reversed. Okay, all right. So this person, they seem very nice. In fact, they never, they never directly fight. They never directly fight. Their, their way of undermining or doing things is far more subtle. So, so this is the person who is damning with, with faint praise or, or yeah, it, they, they never come straight out and say what they think uh, and they never fight with you, but you get the sense, you, know, you get dissuaded in different ways. Uh, it's always very elegant. They're also sort of the person who'll talk behind people's backs but never show. They'll be sweet to everybody. So it, you probably pick up, you'll probably know who this person is. So, so they're, they're, but they're not combative. This is not someone who's going to come out and argue with you. But they'll undermine, they'll do the damning with faint praise, all that kind of thing. You need to ignore them. The hangman here, there's a very spiritual connection here. You, even, if, even if this woman is this person, you have a very strong connection to spirit. Pay attention to that. Pay attention to your dreams. Very strong ancestral connection. That's also why it's connected to the house. You are very, and cancer, you're very connected to your bloodline and it is watching over you. And it'll, it'll slow you down if, if it would be unwise to move forward with this person around. So your ancestral line will not let you open the gate for the Trojan horse. So that's good. For some of you, this is about a relationship. So for some of you, this is a rival in love with the lovers reversed. Otherwise, it's somebody, the issue is somebody, as I say, who pretends to be something they're not, pretends to be a good connection to you when they're not, and they may undermine other relationships for you. This is very, very important at the moment to work out who this person is and to get as far away from them as you can. I wouldn't, they aren't going to battle with you up front, so there's no point in trying. And in fact, it won't help you. They could potentially use that to make others think that you're the combative one, like you're the one, you know? You're the one who's causing the problem. Um, so I, it would be just better to limit what you do around this person. So let's see in the future the Trojan horse, because until you sort of work this through, this is why you needed this hidden fortune re revealed. There was a risk that they would they would come with some sort of battle. But yeah, as I say, a very sneaky hidden battle that could undermine your stability and the new thing that you're trying to protect. So what clarifies the Trojan horse? Seven of Cups reversed. Okay. What clarifies the house, the stability and so forth that you're looking for? The Knight of Cups. Yeah, a lot, a lot of you, this is about love or connections with those that you love. And 
what clarifies a star are. Knight of Pentacles. All right. So for some of you, this person you can't trust, who is a woman, I think, or someone who has very strong women, female characteristics or identifies as a woman, may also be a potential lover. So, you know, it depends on your preferences, depends on, you know, what you identify with and all that. That is a possibility. So that could make it even more complicated that you want to, to create a new home with someone, but in fact, they are, they're kind of very passive aggressive and they're not what they appear. So for some of you, that's a very clear message of being careful. And I think you're getting it from your, your, your ancestors are bringing it through. Otherwise, this person's way of undermining, if this is about either someone that you love and they're undermining your, your connection, um, or if it's something you want to create or something like that, they're undermining all of that. They do it by being, oh, let's just be realistic. You know, like that's a nice idea, but it's that kind of energy. It's, it's, it's presented as helping you and practical advice, but it's anything but. It's, it's a way of, it feels like in that state, it's like somebody who's doing something to, to make you think as small as possible because they feel small. Or because if you actually succeeded, they'd feel smaller. So it's presented as, you know, just some practical advice, you know, just, just expectation management, all that kind of thing. But that's not where it's coming from. I mean, sometimes people can be helpful with that. Sometimes this is what's really tricky about this person because a lot of the way they come across is actually would, if it came from a good heart, would be a good thing. But it's not coming from a good heart. Uh, and you want you want connections close to you that are a good heart. You 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 see people through your own prism, which is a loyal prism. So you tend to think that, and you want good energy, good loving energy in in what makes your life stable and so forth. Because you're dedicated to to protecting and bringing this thing into being. And if any of this is around something with your career, you're very dedicated to see it through. It's in its early stages, and you're going to look after it. But but this could be again trying to undermine your confidence. It could happen undermine you know the sort of stability in the home again at its worst this could be if you are with a partner and you have some new career option your partner could be undermining your being able to do it like oh it's disturbing the home or how's it going to affect the kids or whatever it just depends on who's come to this reading but this is definitely to show you that there are there are energies here that you have to be very careful of and all the all the knowledge of that is there. Now, the beauty is there's also energies that are supporting you. And ultimately, there is far more that is good in these cards than there is bad. Like the only risk is like, could be the woman there if she's the cat, but otherwise you've got the cat and the Trojan horse. Everything else is very, very positive. So it's, it's positive that you've got the message. You've got sort of spiritual energy around you supporting and all of that. So don't don't fret too much. You'll know what to do. The whole point of this was just to be aware that the person was there. So we're also going to use mythical creatures. We're going to get past, present and future, just a mythical creature to watch over you and also to give you another message that could be helpful in unlocking what this, this hidden fortune energy is all about. So for the past, for what's already been put in place, we have... Typhon, confidence. The greatest thing you can give yourself is freedom from what others think. There you go. It's it's there, and that's why that's why we had the Ace of Swords. This is all about the thoughts of others. This is all about other people's opinions. Understanding that and freeing yourself from that is very important. In fact, the Six of Cups reversed with the woman. That may be different to this person, and it may not be your ancestor. For some, it's going to be, but this is a collective reading. But for some of you, this may be right in the past. This has happened before. You've had this happen before. And if you realize it and you let somebody else sort of like have their opinion matter more than yours, you already know what this pattern is. You know what to do. Okay. Then a mythical creature for the present when you're kind of sort of sort out who this is and make sure they don't have too much influence on you. Angel, unity. Each of us are angels with only one wing and we can only fly by embracing one another. So I think that... I think this is probably saying that firstly you'll have angelic and, and ancestral support, but I think it's also saying because this person won't fight outright. If you if you went straight into a fight and you didn't understand this was coming from their own insecurity, you'll end up looking like the bad guy, even though you weren't. Because this person is very good at presenting themselves as as the good person and the caring person and the victim. So I think it's more an angelic thing of sort of being kind to this energy, but not connecting as much. So I think 
the and if they're trying to undermine you being with someone, you're meant to be with the person. So it depends what the situation is. Then if we look at a mythical creature to be helping you into the future, we have Dwil Dwilgi. I've never even heard of this. Looks like a dog anyway. It looks like a dog. Timing. Life is too short to miss out on being really happy. Kiss slowly, laugh and insanely, love truly and forgive quickly. Okay, so th the power of this person is very, very small once you know who it is. And you can even like forgive them and move on because what you're really meant to focus on is this wonderful new thing you're bringing in, whatever it is. And like, and by the time you get there, if you've sort of like navigated it correctly, it's like, okay, fine, you know, you do you, but I'm going ahead and enjoying life. So that's pretty good. Let's also get you a astrology sign for each of the, the times as well, for any other information we can get on it. So for the past, the astrological energy to think about is Libra. That's interesting. Some of you might have a connection to the second reading that was the Libra thing. But, but there's something about balance, balance of thought. And there's something social about this. So this is most likely to be somebody who's in your friendship circle. And so the family stuff is more likely to be good support because Libra is very much about social niceties. I think it's also saying that that sometimes these things have happened before because of the social niceties, you know, the sort of... I remember reading a, a review, I think it was, of, of a, a movie called The Age of Innocence, which was sort of, you know, one of those kind of Pride and Prejudice type era movies. And it talked... The reviewer talked about the savagery under polite society. <laughs> sure, that, that, that kind of concept really always struck me. So I think this is... The, the, the Part of the, the seeds of all of this is how polite we are with each other and what's going on under the, the surface. So being aware of that. But also being balanced with what you deal with it. For uh, the present... We have waxing gibbous moon. Clarify your direction and intention. Yeah, your direction or intention, not what somebody else is telling you to do. Because once you've clarified that, it's hard for somebody to influence you illegitimately. And to the future, Pisces, 12th house, the emotional core of things, connecting with those that are right to connect to, connecting with your dream, dedicating to your dream. You know, with the, the Knight of Cups and the Knight of Pentacles, it's like the, the grail quest, like connecting to, to the bigger collective and what you're meant to do. And I think, you know, there's sort of something very emotionally beautiful and spiritual about what it is that you're bringing in, even if it is bringing a new addition into your family, for instance. So, so that's all very lovely. Let's just finish off then with a blessing. So if, you've, if this helps you understand and avoid influence that was not going to be helpful for you, what is the blessing of knowing this hidden fortune, Pile 1? A blessing of the butterfly queen. So all about transformation, new and beautiful things coming in. Being true to yourself, knowing your own true beauty, knowing what is beautiful to you, the change and the energy of bringing in the new, all of that kind of thing. So... There's, there's a very strong, and I think it's saying all the way through this, there's some very strong female uh, spiritual energies around you that are supporting you, but it's likely to be a woman. It doesn't have to be a woman, but it's likely to be a woman that's also the issue. So I hope that that resonates for you. I hope you enjoyed the reading. It's a bit of a different structure to usual, but kind of fun to do. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 2, to your reading. So you came to the reading with Libra, and as I said in the introduction, <clears throat> this could be as an overarching energy. This could be saying this has something to do with social niceties. Wouldn't surprise me, or social social inter interactions, for various reasons given some of the cards that are here, I wouldn't be surprised if that's very true for many people. But the other thing, and, and, and Libra is also about fairness and balance and so forth, and, and maybe finding that around many people and in situations where... Connections need to be made and and disputes need to be managed and, and the sort of deeper understanding of things need to be done. That's all kind of showing up here as well too. But the other thing it could be, also given these cards, as I said, the time that I'm filming this, we're just coming out of Libra season. We're just about to go into Scorpio season. And so... One of two things could be going on, <clears throat> and it doesn't even really matter whether you're seeing it soon at that time or some other time. It's either that's an indication, because I feel Raven feels very scorpionic to me, that, that the future is very soon. That's one way of looking at it. Or it's a good year away. 
because, or at least as far away as it is to get to LIBOR again when you watch this. And that could be the case too because of the other, the three other uh, star signs that we have here, which could suggest something that's really going to go over quite a long period of time. So it really depends, I guess, on, on who comes to the reading and when you watch it. But I, I think it could be kind of either saying this is all going to happen very quickly or it's going to happen over you know a reasonable period of time, anything up to a year. And I do think it has to do with something to do with social energy because this is the past, this is the present, and this is the future. And what we've got in the past is it looks like a very fortunate energy you've actually put in play. Um, it could have come through some sort of connection with others, some sort of social gathering. In, in the Lenormand, the garden represents the sort of place where polite society used to meet, where, where you could you know, have a party, you know, that kind of thing. So it, it tends to show social connections, social niceties, opportunities to connect, network and so forth. And with Clover next to it, this suggests that something Something good has been put in play, whether or not you're aware of it. Now, the interesting thing is we've also got chaos. So it's possible one of two things could be going on here. One is that you came together with people in some way to deal with something chaotic. And even if it wasn't in chaotic and tumultuous and difficult, there's some real luck that you've actually planted, so to speak, in the garden that is going to sort of come to fruition. So that's one way of reading it. So if you if you have recently been with a number of people dealing with some sort of like difficult situation, even if even if it still feels like it was difficult, there's somewhere in there that some luck or almost some good karma has been created. Otherwise, you felt very lucky in the past and you felt really connected, but underneath everything is something brewing. So it's going to probably depend. And we are going to look with tarot and it might it might clarify whether it's what more one than the other but because of the nature of this sort of reading it could be depending upon who comes to the reading but there's there's definitely a sense of either luck coming out of chaos or chaos being precipitated by something that was lucky and social um, whether it instantly happened I mean like it could like a very very down-to-earth way of reading is is you had a party and everybody's having a good time and then somebody had a meltdown and for some reason, that's got some permutations that you've now got to deal with as, as a way of looking at chaos coming out of something social. But there is luck associated with it. And there's a kind of protection energy with it, even, even if that was the case. So that right now we have Pisces. Pisces is an energy of the connection of all. It's, it's a water sign. So it's the sense of like emotional energy is quite strong. And it's interesting. We have Pisces with fish and we have a bridge so the water under the bridge. This suggests to me, Pisces is also the last sign in the zodiac. And spiritually, it's like it incorporates all the other signs that have come before it. So there's something here again with garden, with many people. I think many people are involved in this or many, maybe many cultures or many, many belief structures or many emotions. And so there's a sort of a sense, and it almost looks to me with these fish like they're going round and round. So there might be a point at which there's a bit of an impasse or how you really maximise what's coming out of this, particularly if you have a sense, if maybe they're going round and round because there's a bit of bit of sort of turbulence already starting to show. And so this is, what is the bridge? What's the bridge over this? So it may be, what is the bridge over the chaos and how it's impacting a variety of people, particularly emotionally? And with Beltane, this is about fertility and passion and so forth. So... One way of reading these two together is that you, this is a, again a very classic way of reading them, it may or may not be true for everybody, is that you went recently to a party or a social event or a networking event and maybe it was very fortunate overall but it also has been a bit chaotic because you met someone you were really attracted to and now you're trying to figure out can I bridge this? You know, it could be, you know, like we're both working in this same industry and we're actually competitors, but there's an attraction. What do I do with it? Could be something like that. Or it could be, I really want to connect with them again, but they were only here, you know, and they're traveling and how do I get from here to there? So that that's one thing that could be going on there. So it's sort of like something that is ostensibly really good and wonderful has kind of thrown everything up in the air. And so now you're kind of going around in circles emotionally trying to figure out, is there a bridge to bring you to what you want? And whether it's love or whether it's something you want to create, it just feels like an opportunity 
that is very positive also is going to mean a lot of turbulence. I guess that's what I would say those two things came together. And it will involve a lot of people and it's going to need kind of almost diplomacy and balance associated with it. That then leads us to the future. And we have the raven. So in this deck, the raven is mystery. And it's sometimes to be careful, but it's usually connected with intelligence, mystery, messages from beyond, all of that kind of thing. Very spiritual, psychic energy here, I think, because Pisces tends to be a very spiritual and psychic card and a very telepathic one because of that incorporation of all the the energies, all the, the signs that have come before it in the natural zodiac. So there's that sort of sense around it. It can sometimes be also a bit of a warning, like a raven can come as a warning. It also, to me, has a connection to the afterworld and to you know maybe guidance from, from the other side because the raven is often a psychopomp. So I feel as though there is going to be information warnings synchronicities coming in and if you pay attention to them and you 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 follow them and you and you think about them then you're going to be able to navigate this well um, you've got virgo which will allow you to kind of integrate various things and maybe find that bridge because virgo is all about integration all about getting a kind of a place for something to be and leo there is a sense of sort of warmth passion bringing about the sort of fiery energy being seen charisma, all of those sort of things, and great loyalty. So I think that the, the thing here is that that something has occurred in the past, and you may not even be clicking yet what it is. It may be There may be yet one other thing with one other party that needs to get involved or some other event potentially that needs to get involved that bridges you from, from this sort of like almost seeded good fortune but turbulence into you know what you're actually going to have to to do to to understand it you cross over and you see this and then you'll get the guidance uh, and I feel like then you'll be able to structure it and integrate it and actually bring it into kind of passionate being but it's like there is a journey around this at the very least this chaos is saying that that there is a you're in one spot now and you need to get to the other to maximize what this luck is and to create what you're trying to create here and there are possibly egos involved because Leo can be a bit like that. And there are possibly lots and lots of details and planning involved because Virgo can be like that. And there may be a bit of mystery and there may be some risks, but you'll also get guidance. So, so I think it's really saying there's something really wonderful here, but it's going to take a bit of effort. And it's going to take a lot of balancing with other people, I think, energetically. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to use tarot. I got a tarot in particular that I think has very similar artwork to this. So we're just going to get one card for each, just for a clarification of each of these energies. So a card to clarify the garden, this social event or this networking or this connection point that, that you have already experienced. Knight of Swords, okay. And then one for the Clover. Two of Swords. Okay, and then one for the chaos energy. The Hierophant. Okay, what I would say is this is either, it, this is about a philosophy or a way of doing things. This event was not, I don't think for most of you, this was an event that was just a party at all. This looks to me like, there was like a kind of a, a belief structure, a cause that drew people together and decisions that needed to be made. And with the Hierophant, you know, that, that there needed to be some structure and order and maybe there wasn't with the chaos. Or maybe maybe with Knight of Swords energy can be energy of wanting to crash or crash. So, you know, an example might be that you went to a community event that was about some sort of thing happening in the community and, and you know, some of the people that were there were were the, the normal sort of like the bastions of the council or something. But there's something that occurred here that that was unexpected and, and that like required a decision and it maybe caused a bit of kerfuffle. And this might be why we've got this balance sort of energy and it's almost like then having to balance things off. It doesn't, it doesn't feel all that social. If there was a social side to it, then then it may have been some sort of like gathering or connection that that the cultures or your families or things like that wouldn't have approved of. So it had to be a bit hidden. But like, it, it's interesting. There's something about a clash with authority that operated or that has been triggered by this in some way. 
So then let's have a look at, at what we see in the present. So what clarifies Pisces? Six of Wands. What clarifies the bridge? Ten of Wands reversed. Okay, that's interesting. What clarifies Beltane? King of Pentacles. Okay, there is something very much about breaking with tradition in some way around this, whether it's, you know, in a love match, whether it's in something political or social, whether it's in, you know, something that your family would have approved of, but, you know, but you don't approve of or vice versa. There's something like that going on. You're certainly, the luck that you've, that you've put in play, even if it's caused a kerfuffle, you're going to be successful. You're going to be successful. And in being that, in crossing over, in connecting two different worlds, it's like connecting old world with new world or something. You're relieving a burden for people. You'll be really recognised for that. And it is the new energy comes with the old order breaking down. So this has a kind of social or political feeling to it, I have to say. But if it is around a friendship or around love, it's it's very much breaking with the tradition culturally and so forth. It is it is iconoclastic at its core. But it does look like it has a lot of potential. Now, that could be why there's a bit of a warning. You have to be careful and navigate this quickly. And there are other people to be involved with. So I think these are other people. So let's just see what we get in terms of clarification. So around the raven... I mean, even look at the raven. He looks like a councilman or something, doesn't he? Look at look at like the kind of vestments. It could be saying that that if there is something like that, if you're dealing with sort of authority figures, there might be one in particular who who will give you the keys to the kingdom to really do something with this. Let's see what we get with the raven, Queen of Cups. Then with Virgo, Nine of Wands reversed. And then the Empress with Leia. Okay, so I think these are people that you're going to deal with in the future as a result of this. So the Raven, as I say, I feel does actually know, has some of the mysteries and will be emotionally attuned to you with the Queen of Cups. So as long as you're honest and authentic in whatever you do around whatever this is, whether it's wanting to get the approval of someone in your family for wanting to marry someone or whether it's changing a social structure, changing a law, there is someone who, who will be attuned with you and, and there's a very strong sort of psychic, scorpionic sort of energy about that person. You have to be careful with the Virgo energy. You have to make sure there's someone who's all about what, what are the practicalities of this. And they're very sensitive. They don't like to think there's chaos for no reason. And they don't like a kerfuffle in their, in their backyard, thank you very much. So, so there's, there's someone who you have to be careful of around the details of things. So just be aware of that. And there's also someone who is very proud, who's, who's used to having their opinion listened to, who's used to being kind of obeyed. But ultimately, if they, if they feel that they're getting that, will support you 100% because they can see the new energy that's coming through. They can see that, that they, they, there is no more fertility, so to speak, in what was left. This does need to change. Very interesting. Okay, so let's get you a mythical creature at each level, past, present and future, to, to also guide you. So in the past, with this luck that you've actually put in play, we have unicorn, dreaming, go confidently in the direction of your dreams, live the life you have imagined. Yeah, you don't need to be held back by things. You are going to be able to cut through. And it's very unique what you're doing. It's also very pure. Unicorns are very pure of heart. Then we have Mermaid for the current. Mercy. This universe is not outside of you. Look inside yourself. Everything that you want, you already are. Mermaids with the, with the fish, with, with every all the answers to crossing this bridge are within the emotions and within the heart and within you. And the bridge has to be crossed because the old world is not, is not right anymore. And into the future... Harpy, change. To change your life, you have to change yourself. To change yourself, you have to change your mindset. So I think this is, this is it is saying to you, you have to be clear on what you want to do. But I also think you're just going to have to bring a lot of people on side. And sometimes you have to go on a bit about it. You know, a harpy goes on a bit. <laughs> but, but, but you actually have a message. And, and your message is to bring people along with you, to bring hearts and minds 
along with you. That, that's the way it will work. Let's also get you a astrology energy for the past, the present and future to guide you. So in the past... Waxing gibbous moon, clarify your direction and intention. Yeah, this was the opportunity. There was sort of like luck. It was time was on your side. And if you if you had an idea, any idea that you had and you potentially then were around people, it's time is coming. You know, it, it, it was a lucky idea to have, even if it caused a bit of kerfuffle. In the present, cardinal, yeah, initiate. You're meant to initiate something new, bring something new. And that has library, you see. So this is library's cardinal nature, initiating things as part of that overarching energy. And the future, square. There is going to be some opposition. There is going to be some battles. But at the end of the day, that's also the, the energy that makes something happen, brings something into being. So, so it's going to take a little bit to, to get everybody on side, but by and large, you're going to be able to do it by the looks of things. So let's just get you a blessing overall, having sort of seen this, this hidden fortune revealed to you, pile two. The blessing is a blessing of litter. So this is a blessing of the Fae itself and of the new and of bringing the new in and of spring and on all of those sort of things. So, so you, are, you are that garden energy from the beginning, that clover. There is something very beautiful, something very lucky that you're going to bring in. It is breaking with the past in some way and you have to connect people, different people. It's going to involve different people in some way. And some of them are going to be easier to bring on board than others, but you are going to succeed. So I hope that that resonates for you i hope you enjoyed the reading if so please like the video and subscribe if you care to share in the comments i'd love to hear otherwise i hope to see you in future readings welcome pile three to your reading so you came to the reading with the pyramids and as i say maybe what drew you to it if you have a connection to egypt that kind of thing the mysteries all of that sort of stuff there's certainly a very very strong spiritual overtone to this uh, in in the the guidebook that goes with this deck the creator particularly talks about the pyramids as something that is solid and stable and long lasting and of of long lasting importance and that's echoed by the first card in the past energy here with the tower. The tower card in Lenormand means the exact opposite to what it means in tarot because in tarot it's kind of things breaking down and falling apart. The tower in Lenormand is about something that's long-standing, secure, stable. So there, there is a sense that there is, I think there's a commitment. I think there's a commitment you have made in a past life that you're carrying through even into this life. And it's very spiritual. And I think you're going to become more and more aware of it as time goes on through this spread. You probably are already to some degree, but it's a stability. And it's, it's almost like you took an oath. That's what it looks like to me. We've also got bear. Bear is something very big, something very important. This is not minor. You have the cross here. It's never minor when you get the cross in Lenormand. It is a very important spiritual energy that, that this card is powerful across all. It's just, it's at, this, at its core, this is spiritual. At its core, it may have some struggle associated with it and some sacrifice. And you may be going through that right now, which we'll talk about. But nevertheless, it's like an oath you made. And there's going to be hard work in the future and also coming across people from the past who maybe you couldn't trust and you're going to have to deal with them again. But I think that you have a real sense, you have a knowledge, you can see them. And I'll get into why I'm saying that, or you will see them in the future. So as I say, something solid, something spiritual, something long lasting, something over many lifetimes. The tower in the past, this, this is something you brought through. It's important. Aquarius is interesting. It's like you brought something very ancient into the future, if that makes sense to you. The, the Aquarius is all about the future. It's transpersonal. It's, it's an air sign. So it's a little bit a little bit detached. There's a great deal of philosophy associated with this. I feel like when she's looking into the water here, I think she's like she's scrying the future. So I think that this is like part of what you've brought through is very magical, very prophetic, very psychic energy. But it's like it's on a big picture. It's like you'd be less likely to sit and read for an individual, for instance, as read what's going to happen in the world. That's the kind of energy and, and big shifts and big things around spirituality and around 
the belief structures, you know, and with some of the things that are going on in the world at the moment, you can probably guess the kind of things I'm talking about. You're somehow connected to all of that, like by a lineage in some way, and you've brought that in. So I think your past energy here is, is over lifetimes. It's not just recent, but recently you may have become more aware of it. There could be sort of something that you can see into your future that you now know. It's almost like you're activated, like being a sleeper cell or something, um, for a spiritual sleeper cell, I mean, nothing nothing nefarious. Um, and you, you remember to some degree. So right now you have the broom. The broom is a bit of a, a tricky energy. It is an energy of clearing and cleaning everything out. So this is sort of like if you are ready to take this on, it's like simplifying your life, clearing everything out. But it can be a bit harsh. And it can be a bit repetitive. So this is this feels like it's like, as I say, it's like a vow you've taken, and you do this in every life. And you're now you're now preparing yourself to do it. I just suddenly had a really strong image of a samurai, clearing out and making everything simple and ready to go out to the next the next battle or whatever. So there's a, a sort of a sense around this at the moment of you're clearing out and decluttering to be ready. News is coming. Or has just come so it's very very soon or it's just come that's that's triggered you to know it that's what the writer is about so you know you can be you could be receiving a letter or an email or an invitation or something or there's or there's a download from spirit that's come to you so it's either just happened or it's or it's very very imminent because it's right here in the present and this activates this sense of the spiritual purpose for you and the spiritual approach but as I say, there is a kind of a sacrifice. It's like you you are aware of that. You're aware that this is going to cost you something or not necessarily cost you something in a bad way, but it's going to take time and dedication. There's a very strong sense of dedication in this. So that then we move to the future where you take on the work with the bee. The bee is industrious. The bee looks after the queen bee. The bee B looks after the community. There's a real sense of hard work. You know that what's coming. It's what you're clearing everything out. You've got the message. You know what's happening. You know what your cause is. You're going to get on with the work. And in doing it, you bring in whatever the age-old battle is. Because with the mask, you've got people who are not what they appear. You know, you've got this sort of sense. I'm getting for some of you, this sort of dates back to sort of something in the kind of times when there were those, when people wore those sort of masks, you know, those sort of plague doctors and so forth. It might sort of go back to that kind of a time. But this is definitely, and uh, you're going to become aware that some people are not what they appear. That's what this is about. And you're going to kind of realise that I think kind of psychically and intuitively first, but you also will have received information that made that clear. So that they, they will be unmasked, but but it's your sense of the past and your knowledge of the past that does it. Because look at this cat here representing karma. So this is knowing this is happening again. This is knowing that this is a, a pattern. And and the cat is looking, I think, at the mask. You know. You will not really be fooled. You'll know who to trust and who not to trust. You'll know who's not what they appear. Because you've, you've danced this dance with them before. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And And you know. You know what you're dealing with. And you're ready to do the work, whereas they are hiding at the moment. So you have the advantage, I think. Okay, so let's have a look with tarot a little bit more detail about this. Um, so I'm going to, I'm using a tarot deck that I think has similar sort of artwork. So it's sort of a synergistic. I'm going to just pull one card for each of them. So first with the past, present and the future. So each card in it, just to clarify, just to get any other information. So... A card to clarify the tower, the thing that is very solid from the past, the thing that is very secure and stable. The Six of Swords. Look, that seems to have a tower as well. Isn't that interesting? Look at how those two things are together. This one's in the woods or whatever. This one, they're going to over the sea. But there's a, there's always been a home base for this, Pile 3. There's always been a, a what would be the word? kind of a lighthouse for it, um, a base of operations, whatever. Then when we're looking at Aquarius, what, what is the energy of Aquarius doing here for you? Queen of Cups reversed. It's opening up and re making you remember your psychic ability. You've shut it down a bit, but this is calling to you to wake it up because Queen of Cups reversed is kind of almost denying that kind of scorpionic psychic energy. And it's like you, you don't trust the emotion around this. This is interesting. Because this looks a bit like a Queen of Cups, but she's doing it through Aquarius. She's doing it through the mind. She has a certain degree of detachment. I think what this is saying is that when you've dealt with this before, it's been too emotional to you and that's cost you. 
So you're you're actually now being a bit detached with it. With the bear, and if this sort of fits with something in your most recent past too, that makes sense. But I think for many of you, this is from a past life. Then with the bear, the qualification there, the tower. Okay, yeah, and it's all about protecting the tower because the tower is meant to stand against everything. But the big issue is that there is something, whatever this is that you have dedicated yourself to, there is always the risk it becomes the tower in in the tarot rather than the tower in the Lenormand. So you know, you, this, like you have this huge stewardship, protection energy around whatever this is. And it's big. Whatever it is, is big. So let's see. Let's see what the broom has to clear out right now in the present to prepare you for this. Judgment reverse. Clearing out everything that isn't your calling. Wow. Everything that gets in the way of your calling. What is the rider? What news is the rider bringing you right now in the present? Two of Wands reversed. It's not a matter of choice. You actually don't have a choice. Sorry. <laughs> it's too important. What you're doing is too important. It doesn't have to be huge and on the world stage. But whatever you're doing, is, is, it's, it's very important. Okay. What about the cross? Tell us about the cross because that's kind of the, the fulcrum of the whole thing here. The emperor. This has to do with power. This has to do with the right use, the spiritual use of power, action in the world, structures in the world. Defender of the faith, I just heard. Now, this doesn't mean that it has to be about core religion, but there's that kind of energy around it. It doesn't have to be religion, but defender of the faith, the thing that is believed in, the thing that must be protected. Okay, so what is the B? The work that you have to do. Five of Swords. This is almost like in the immediate future, there's almost a clearing out from a battle that's occurred so that it can be rebuilt. So, in fact, this may be part of what this is saying, that even in the recent past, like this, there's something about karma and you've brought all this in, but maybe in the recent past, there's been something where you were overly emotionally connected to something and as a whole, it didn't hold together. So there was a battle. Not You didn't lose the war. This is, this is a much bigger thing to sort of move forward and, and win something on a bigger scale. But maybe there was a kind of a miscalculation because of emotion. So the first piece of work is to clear out that which that you know it can't go forward so that you know this is what the broom's doing you know like this is all protected whatever this was the tower is protected by not having that be too much of a an issue so what's the mask these people that you can't trust some other information about them ace of wands reversed these are ones who are against change now it's interesting because you're trying to stabilize something and defend something but to do it you realize that certain things have to be cleared out and changed. They they resist any change. So there are people who within this think that they're defending whatever this is, but they're actually standing in the way of the progress that's necessary. So what is karma to you? Two of cups. There could be a connection, a love connection coming in that's important, like a karmic connection, soulmate connection. Or it could be that you're trying to reharmonize something after the clearing of this energy is done and after a change is done and after the, 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 the almost the foundations have been reconstructed and, and refortified, you reconnect with people. So it may even be that some of these people who aren't what they appear could, could eventually be allies, but at this point in time, they can't. You've got, to, you've got to kind of move through the karmic energy. But for some of you, it may bring in a, a relationship as well too. But I feel like it's it's then a comrade in arms. Not not necessarily like, not, I'm using war metaphors here and I'm not necessarily thinking that anybody's going to war, but I'm just using it allegorically. But like a, a love connection that there is a common cause. And there's a kind of sense of celebration that they're sort of like, sort of like clinking their cups together and celebrating this. You know, once that, that karmic, karmic issue has been resolved and worked through. Okay, so let's get you some mythical creatures. This is of the, the three, the most mythical <laughs> of them, I've got to say. So we're just going to get a mythical creature for the past, present, and future to see what else around this fortune is being revealed to you. So around the past, Bridget, fertility. The cycle of fertility is a cycle of creation that goes through birth, growth, maturity, death, and rebirth. This actually, 
I mean, it could be, all of this could be around love, bringing new love in, all those sort of things with this as an outcome here. But I think in a lot of ways, this is the way that something that is longstanding, that is spiritual, is, is, is protected and stays strong is by being able to go through that cycle. So it goes through a cycle of being this type of tower and then that type of tower and then it's this type of tower and that type of tower. So part of what you're doing is defending that energy clearing it all out and rebirthing it and there are others who don't understand what's going on okay so then let's have a look at the mythical creature to help you in the present when the news is going to come to you of, of understanding what it is that you're being called to do werewolf nature look deep into nature and you will see without rain nothing grows learn to embrace the storms of your life yeah i think sorry to say pile three <laughs> I think you've got a mission and it's not necessarily easy. But having said that, I do think you're going to succeed. Okay, and then into the future. Manticore, reconciliation. Okay, you could be reconnected with someone who was separated because of all of this. Suffering is not holding you. You are holding suffering. Learn to let go. That is the key to happiness. So I think once all this is done letting go of it because you have a reward coming to you like just because there's something really difficult and really big that you've vowed to do i think it's saying in this life you're going to do it and then you're allowed to let it go so that's good news <laughs> not carrying it further than that let's get you an astrology energy for each part of this time period as well so for the past fire fire see there's fire there a lot of passion, a lot of action, a lot of energy, the passion towards making the vow, all of that kind of thing. If this is playing out like as a love relationship in this thing, which it could be because of that, I'm just saying, there was a lot of passion to start with and it probably went between feeling very solid and secure and the exact opposite. Uh, and there was almost a kind of spiritual balance that needs to be found to be able to really connect. But there's a lot of passion around whatever it is. In the present, the energy has the 10th house. So this, yeah, it's about power. This is about power in some way, the powers of the world. And, and it could be in your career or vocation that it plays out. And then for the future, conjunction. Oh, yeah, I do think, I think you're getting a reward at the end. Like if, if, you, if you are already happily in love, then it could just be that you've got to spend quite a bit of time getting on with something but your reward is that you reconnect at the end but otherwise i think you might be having love coming out of it or at least a kind of um, finding a karmic connection and reconnecting um as a as a result of whatever this is okay so let's finish up with a blessing i think you need a blessing i do think it's going to work out really really well but i think this is of all of them it's the most spiritual and it's the most full-on so let's get you a blessing just to close out the reading A blessing of elf locks. So I actually just paused because I just wanted to check my memory of this because it's a while since I've seen this card and it is what I thought and it's interesting. So a blessing of elf locks is the concept of like fairies sort of leaving locks of their hair to show that they've been around and it's it's showing that there is actually a spiritual blessing. There's the, 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 the protection of the fae, there's the protection of spiritual energies around you to, to help so that that is there and they're interacting with your life, which makes a lot of sense. The other thing that makes a lot of sense is that the, the Fae was sometimes thought to be stealing things, but often they just cleared out what wasn't necessary anymore. So I think they're going to help you in, in the broom energy of clearing out and simplifying and, and fortifying the energy that you need. But there's certainly a sense that you've got that spiritual guidance around you. So I hope that that resonates for you. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings.